Hey, hey, hey. It is Monday, October 18th, 2021. Welcome to another edition of Red Spice. It is starting to feel starting to feel like a Monday. If you know what I mean. But we're gonna power through it and get into um, some interesting topics. But before we get into any of that, if you're already subbed and returning, welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. If you're new here and you're wondering who is this chick, well, let me introduce myself. It's Brittany, bitch. Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Depending on when you're rocking with us, I really appreciate it. If you like horror movies, if you like spooky season, if you love music, yeah, this is the place for you all month and today, and just in general, really, to be honest. So hit that thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, and share with your friends. I really appreciate it. Speaking of which, for my 31 days of Halloween, I am watching a horror movie that is brand new to me every single day and talking about it on the next day's episode or the same episode, just depending on my schedule. But today, I watched The Blob, the original from 1958. And the synopsis of this is a drive in favor the sci fi classic follows teenager Steve and his best girl Jane as they try to protect their hometown from a gelatinous alien life form that engulfs everything it touches. The first to discover the substance and live to tell about it, Steve and Jane witness the blob destroying an elderly man and grow to a terrifying size. But no one else has seen the goo, and policeman Dave refuses to believe the kids without proof. So, I just found out it has a sequel. Interesting. I really don't know anybody that's seen it. If you've seen the sequel, let me know what you think. This has 68% on Rotten Tomatoes, which isn't great. The runtime is like 82 minutes, which is amazing. I love that older movies have short older movies that have shorter run times. Not all of them do, but a lot of them. That just makes me so happy. Love that. Um, I gotta say, I'm kind of bummed that the really cute little doggy dies. Which, I mean, spoilers for like a 60-year-old movie, but yeah. That was that was a bummer. Um, the effects were interesting. I just think they were kind of advanced because um, a couple little scenes that they had with a blob that they're trying to destroy it reminded me of some of the effects in Children of the Corn, which didn't come out until the eighties. So I guess they were kind of advanced. Props to the team for that. Also, I just totally forgot Steve McQueen was an actor. Like, totally slipped my mind. <laughs> he looks mad old in this movie. So does everybody that's supposed to be playing teenagers. They all look at least 25. Maybe older. It's super obvious. Which I've never noticed before. Like, I don't know, it was just a scene, it felt super obvious for me. Obviously, they, they do that these days all the time. It's super normal because they can usually pass, you know, for teenagers. But this, it, it didn't work. It was something that stuck out like a sore thumb. <laughs> and it kind of made me laugh. Overall, I just thought this movie was okay. Like, I probably wouldn't rewatch it. I'm definitely, I'm going to check out the remake eventually, but I'm glad I saw it. This gives me 
you know, more knowledge. Knowledge is power, you know what they say. Yeah, well, y'all let me know what you think. Let me know if you like the original or the 80s remake better. Super curious to find that out. And with that said, I think we are going to transition into uh, the Colin Powell news. Big bummer. Former Secretary of State Colin Powell has passed away at 84 due to a breakthrough case of COVID. Although he was fully vaccinated, um, he was elderly and he also had cancer, multiple myeloma, which is actually the same kind that my dad has. And he's fighting right now. It's coming back for a second time. And he was immunocompromised. You know, my dad actually isn't vaccinated right now because he's just in the middle of this battle. His treatment required every single vaccination he's ever had to be removed from his body, including COVID. He can't get vaccinated again until next year. So obviously this hits close to home for me for that reason. And also it's very sad and a little scary. So I know I'm probably preaching to the choir here, but please, please get vaccinated. It can make a world of difference. Unfortunately, it didn't for Mr. Powell. But fingers crossed we can get this thing under control sooner rather than later. My thoughts and prayers to the loved ones. Alright. Alright, always tough to make transitions to lighter topics, but um one thing that I have super interested to check out is this trailer for this movie The Lost Daughter, which comes out next year. I think that comes out in January. It's gonna be a Netflix movie, which is awesome. Super convenient, super safe. Don't have to like risk going to the theater if you don't feel comfortable or you can't afford it. This cast is killer. Olivia Coleman, who I love, Dakota Johnson, who I like more and more. <laughs> Just like the more interviews and stuff I see with her. Um, and she's a decent actress as well. And it also has Maggie Gyllenhaal, who I like. So let's see what this movie is all about. Looks like it's a drama or a thriller. Miss Caruso, welcome. Thank you. Got the Ron Butch Film Festival Awards. Just let me know if you need anything. Great. Does she have an American accent in this? I can't tell yet. Oh, a film by Maggie Dylan Hall. So, did she direct I have this? Kids. Yes, I have two daughters. It's based on a book. Hey, your mommy's big girl. You're my big girl. <sighs> She's driving me crazy. What were your daughters like when they were little? She looks so sad. She's obviously still oh, grieving. Oh, 
I saw you at the beach. Ed Harris. <laughs> Shout out to TLD. <laughs> The, bell, bell. Elena. the little girl lost her dog. She wouldn't stop crying. Oh. A Children work. are a crushing responsibility. Happy birthday. Hmm? <laughs> Dang. Mama. I'm working. I'm suffocating. Oh, that's right. The bottle accents is so cute. <laughs> Peter Slyer's guard. Feels weird. Okay, I have no idea what this movie is about. I'm not getting much from that trailer at all, story-wise. <laughs> uh, let's look at the synopsis here. A woman's be beach vacation takes a dark turn when her obsession with a young mother forces her to confront the secrets of her past. Okay, it's written and directed by Maggie John Hall. That's impressive. Hopefully it's good. did not recognize Dakota Johnson with that dark hair. I gotta say, she looks so different. Not that it's a bad thing. Just an observation. Also, I forgot Jessie Buckley is in this, who I love. I'm just so captivated with her ever since I've, I saw Wild Rose. I think that she is so talented. She's a really good singer as well. Um, just in general, if you haven't seen that movie, I think it's still on Hulu. Check it out. It's so good. That was a recommendation I got from Jeff Snyder. But yeah, I love watching anything she does. So She was great in season four of Fargo. I'm definitely going to be watching her in this. Yes. So, so it's going to be out on New Year's Eve, which is an interesting release date. I, mean, I guess it's like a drama thriller. I'm so that's the vibe I'm getting from this. There was blood on her shirt at one point, and she like passed out. Not sure what that was about. Maybe she has mental illness or something. Because it looks like she was maybe having like visions or something of her daughter i don't know was her daughter kidnapped did she go missing did she die like i was like i'm curious as to what this actual um secret in her past is yeah super intriguing those are my initial thoughts you'll let me know uh what you Decipher from the trailer. Let me know if you're interested in this. If you will be checking it out, hit me up in the streamlabs in the comments. Any of that. Also, give me your thoughts on Colin Powell. And yeah, anything else mentioned on today's episode? And I will see y'all mañana. But until then, we still got to say this here every day until it happens. Brent Hankinson, Miles Cosgrove, Jonathan Mattingly, the rest of the cops who killed Brianna Taylor. All three of them before killing Brianna Taylor. And now the shots that missed. Justice for Black Lives. Black Lives Matter today and every day. It's a movement, not a moment.